So, for today's meditation, I want to start with some series of questions, some thoughts, uh, which you can help me answer. <clears throat> do you maintain your car? You do, right? Does the law require you to change your oil, change your brake pads? No, but you still do it, right? Why do you do it? To be safe, to maintain the vehicle so it has a you know, long life, right? Do you maintain your house? Why do we do that? The same reasons, right? If we don't maintain our house, what happens? It will fall apart. If you have seen some abandoned uh, houses or properties, after you know, 10, 15, 20 years, it starts to fall apart. The building that we are in, this church is 150 years old. Yes, this summer it will be 150 years old. It is still standing. And one of the reasons is every congregational meeting, there's at least one budget item to fix up something here, right? Uh, we're fixing up, you know, we just did our sidewalks. Um, you know, we fixed up our coffee house, the fellowship hall, the kitchen. Even after 150 years, it's a beautiful piece of property. If you go up to the attic, you can see the original woodwork, and it's still there, and it's, this building is still standing. And the reason is because we have put intentional effort to maintain the property. So let me ask you this question. What kind of maintenance are you doing for your spiritual life? So what are you doing for your spiritual life? We repeatedly hear, um, you know, sermon series after sermon series, we emphasize the focus on being in the word. We emphasize the importance of prayer, um, you know, uh, worshiping God and so on. Yes, this is all needed. And this is the fundamentals. There's one other thing that I do, which is called as fasting. So I don't know, how many of you have fasted before? Okay, I see some few hands here. Um, you know, looks like some of them haven't done that. So what is fasting? Now, depending on your background, uh, you will have some idea about fasting. Uh, if you were raised Catholic, uh, you know Lent, and fasting is one of the components of that. Now, if you have friends from other religious faith, you would have seen them do fasting in a certain way. So in some or the other uh, way, you are familiar with fasting, especially you're diabetic. You know, you have to check your glucose level before fasting and after fasting, right? So you, you have an idea what today, what I would like to do is deep, dive a little deeper into the scripture to see how that is beneficial for us. In order to see what is fasting, I would like to start with what is not fasting. It is not a way to make God do something for you. <laughs> you know, you know, certain you know, group of Christians, you know, they have this habit of treating God like a genie in a bottle, right? They want a new job. I'm going to fast and pray until I get that job. You know, um, you know, finding the right spouse or, you know, I want to marry that person, so I'm going to fast and pray until I get him or her, right? Um, when you want a brand new car, I'm going to fast and pray for a brand new car. You know, sometimes we use fasting as a method to seek the desires of our heart. It is not fasting. It is not dieting. Sometimes we'll be like, you know what? For spiritual things, you know, Bible talks about it. So, you know, I have to lose some weight anyway. So might as well do some dieting and, you know, fasting. So we can, you know, kill two uh, birds with one stone. It is not a cleanse. You know, it's not a time for us to, you know, hey, let the, all the toxic come out. I'm going to, you know... Uh, no, it's not. It, it, it is not something to make you look more spiritual. 
It's not a competition. You know, there are people that I've seen who does fasting for 41 days. Uh, basically, one day more than Jesus did. So <laughs> um, sometimes it's really hard to understand where they're coming from. So this is not what fasting is. Fasting is not a commandment. It is not something that you're required to do to be a Christian. As a Bible-believing Christians, we only have two ordinances. The first one is water baptism by immersion, which we only do once in our lifetime. And the second is large table. We do it in remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus. So these are the two physical ordinances that is given to the church. Rest everything is more of faith-based. So, um, however, though it's not a commandment, the Bible clearly talks about many instances in Old Testament as well as New Testament. In the Old Testament, uh, we see, you know, the Israelites fasting, um, you know, at the time of Esther. Uh, we've seen uh, people in Nineveh doing fasting out of repentance. They were repenting. They received the, uh, the, the uh, message from Jonah and they fasted. They put on their sackcloths, ashes, and they fasted for repentance. In the New Testament, you see Jesus, who is the Son of God, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And there are times he have quoted, he said, things like this will not go away without fasting and prayer. So the importance of fasting is you can see in, throughout the scripture. So again, coming back to the question, what is fasting? If I have to summarize it, I would say it is to give up something of importance to you for a specific period of time or abstain from it. To give up something that is very important to you for a period of time. Now, please do not confuse with the things that you should give up anyways, right? If you're abusing your spouse, don't say, I'm gonna fast, so I'm not gonna abuse my wife for the next seven days, and I will continue after that. No, you should give that up anyways. If you have a drug problem, alcohol, smoking, or any other bad habits, or certain words that you're using that you're not supposed to use, you should give it up anyways. It's not something that you do for a certain period of time as a part of fasting. What is the purpose of fasting? It's the purpose of fasting is fasting should be to take your eyes off the things of this world, your circumstances to focus completely on God. Fasting is a way to demonstrate to God and to ourselves that we are serious about our relationship with him. Fasting helps us gain a new perspective and a renewed reliance upon God. In the Old, in, in the old Testament, when you look at fasting, it's mainly you see an abstaining from uh, consuming food. And that's how uh, specifically uh, fasting was done at that time. See, the, the, the only thing, you know, um, uh, so that is one way to do it. Uh, but then Bible does not clearly prescribe how fasting is done. It doesn't say, you know, you can drink water, but not this. You have to, you know, do it in the morning or in the afternoon or this is what, there is no set rules or prescription about how a fasting is done. And you should thank God that I'm not in charge of creating that. Because if I were to do it, I would have made fasting a lot more exciting. I, I, can, I can totally think how that would go. You know, I would be like, you know what? Uh, you have to get up at like 4.59 a.m. Not before, not after. It has to be dot 4.59. 
and then you have to take a cold shower at four degrees Celsius water, and then you have to pat dry yourself with a towel made out of sheep's wool? I would have come up with some amazing, exciting ideas. And you should be thankful that I'm not in charge of that. <laughs> uh, so Bible does not clearly say how it is done. Uh, but some of the ways you can clearly see, you know, uh, some people do Daniel's fast. What that is, is it's coming from book of Daniel. When Daniel was taken into captivity, uh, being an Israelite, he's not allowed to consume certain type of food. And in the king's court, king ordered them to eat that. He said, you know what? I will not defile myself with the unclean food. So here I am, you know, uh, give me vegetables. I'm good, right? So some people followed the annuals fast wherein they give up meat. But the other way to look at it is, if you are a person who really doesn't care about meat, is it really fasting? Giving it up? So, there are other people who strictly do not eat or drink anything. And there are people who fast by, you know, we, can, we cannot eat, but we can drink anything. So what they would do, they'll take milk, put some ground almonds on it, their chia seeds, the protein powder. So the way I look at it is, the fasting is more of a heart issue. Because when Jesus, uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, he says, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like hypocrites with a sad, a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, and they appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have earned their, uh, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Jesus is saying that because in the Older Testament, they were given a lot of traditions. There, is, there was a lot of activities that was given to them and they carried generation after generation when they started doing things, they lost the heart. They were doing it because it was a tradition. There was no connection to the God. They lost the meaning behind why they were doing certain things. So when the Pharisees fasted, they just wanted to look good. They wanted to show, oh my God, I am fasting. I am doing this for God. That is what Jesus, when he said, I am not here to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So in the New Testament, when he's talking, he's talking more of where your heart is. And in a fasting, what are you going to give up to spend that time with him? You know, in the Old Testament, in the olden times, the food was so important to somebody because most of the work they did was very labor intensive. And they used to give that up to focus on God. But in the New Testament, imagine this. Let's, let's, let's take a moment to imagine. Imagine that Jesus did not come 2,000 years ago, but he is coming today. What is the thing that he will say that we give up? He'll, first thing I think he's going to say is cell phone. He's not going to be talking about food probably. He'll say, you know, give up your cell phone. Give up the sports. And give up a lot of things. You can just fill in the blanks with things that you think is taking over your time and effort. In, in, in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, you know, Paul, Apostle Paul talks about giving up intimacy with your spouse for a brief period to focus on fasting and prayer. My understanding of fasting is devoting dedicated time to focus on God completely. No job worries, no kids' sports, no cell phones, no sports betting, no dinner plans, no nothing. Setting 
everything aside. Yes, you need your job to survive, to pay your bills. You need to family. It's, it's your God-given responsibility to raise your children. It is your responsibility to love your spouse and be a true companion. But God never comes second to that, though it's what God has given you. God always comes first. Can you take time to set aside some time where you're truly, truly, truly focusing on God? We just did the Armor of God series. And we went by one, each one, our belt of truth, the shoes, the breastplate, the helmet. The way I look at fasting, it's the time you take to put on your armor. It's the time that you take to train yourself in the battle. It's the time you take rest to, you know, regenerate your energy. This is where you let the Holy Spirit transform you. This is where you build the spiritual stamina. Now, let me be very clear on that. There is, there is nothing called a spiritual stamina. It's a word that I use to give you an idea of, you know, um, our ability to, you know, focus on God, ability to dive uh, into the scripture, ability to pray, you know, more frequently. Um, there is no measurement for spiritual stamina. Uh, it's not in Bible, just be, you know, very clear. Uh, but it's just to give you an idea of what that looks like. Like somebody who trains for tracks, you know, they have to practice. They need to improve their stamina so they can do it more. See, are you the kind of person who you comes out of prayer and you thought you prayed for 30 minutes and you look at the watch and it's only three minutes? Or you're the kind of person who thought you've been praying for 30 minutes but you look at the watch and it's already three hours? That's what I'm talking about when it comes to the stamina. You know, we start... Um, the Saturday, first Saturday, uh, you know, prayer and worship time. And it's, you know, when, when I observe, I see these two groups of people there. One who wants to keep on going. You know, they don't want to stop the songs. They want to worship and keep on going. And then there's another group of people after one hour, they don't know what to do. They're just sitting there. Okay, is it done? Is it not done? Uh, what are we doing? Why is that? Because when we get into the routine of, okay, I'm going to pray, okay, okay, you know what, I'm going to spend five minutes, I'll do this, okay, you know what, I need to run down, okay, let me do the scripture part, okay, okay, my, today's checklist is done. Today I have prayed, I've, you know, uh, read my Bible, you know, I listened to the card on the songs, the checklist is done. If we continue that way, we will never build a spiritual stamina. We will never have more time for God to show you where you need to head, where you need to go. So if there is no set way of doing fasting, how do we fast? And when do we fast? You know, Acts chapter 13, verse 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate me, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So, as I said earlier, there is no prescribed way to do fasting. There is no time said, okay, when you hit this stage in your life, you have to do fasting, or this much time in a year, you have to do fasting. So when do we do that? When you think it is necessary to sit in the presence of God. 
It's when you're trying to make the most important decisions. Apostles, when they were making the most important decisions, they fasted and prayed to say, God, it's not us. You have to tell us. They were so uber focused to receiving the right and so that they could make the right decision. They uber focused on receiving that wisdom from God. In my personal life, whenever I have a very important decision, I've spent time in fasting. And fasting in this time, you know, I don't know where my cell phone is. You know, you know, I might have, you know, my songs playing somewhere. You know, just there's no plan. There's no, um, you know, time limit. There is no uh, specified anything. It's just sitting there and just praying and remembering what God has done, what God wants me to do, trying to just listen from God through his word. You know, um, some of you know about this, not all of you. Um, you know, I'm married to Annette, uh, one of the, you know, women's leader here at the church. And I decided to marry her after I fasted and prayed and received from God that she is the one for me. And please understand, I haven't met this woman in my life. I haven't physically seen her. I've spoken to her on the phone and on WhatsApp. That was it. And I made the decision in like roughly in a week. But let me tell you, when you make decisions like that, you know God is in the center of it. The first time I actually met Annette was the week we were getting engaged. I was trying to do a surprise, um, you know, for her birthday. So, you know, I flew out to, you know, New York, um, you know, one week I spent with her. That's the first time I actually met her. And the next time I saw her was like the month or two before the wedding. The point I'm trying to make is, Whenever you have those important decisions in your life, I will encourage you not to just swing it, not to be like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And then just go make your decision. Pause. Take your time. Sit in the presence of God and understand, God, what are you here to teach me in this decision? When you're looking for a new job or you have a new job offer, Are you really seeking God to understand what is next? Because here is where the perspective changes. When you're looking for a job from a human perspective, we look at what the salary is. We look at, do we have growth in that job? We look at, is it how convenient is it for travel? That is our way of looking at things. That is our mindset. That's our human nature. But when you sit in the presence of God, God will start speaking to you in a whole different way. Sometimes you don't know what his plan is. Sometimes the most lucrative job, God might say no. It might be the job that might take you away from your family. It might take you away from God. It might, you know, it could be anything. God knows what's best for you. So decisions like that, it's very good to just spend time in because sometimes God wants you to take it because he wants to use you to transform somebody else's life in that place. Looking back now that every job that I took, I see how God led me to the next step. That is one thing I never took it very lightly. I've always relied on God. God, what's next? There are times I was so frustrated with the job I took and I'm like, I prayed about this. I know it's from God. And I'm like, why am I in this position? But please understand, when you made that decision and you really know it's from God, you have something to lean back on. Now you're not, you don't have doubts or regrets because God asked you to do it. Now whatever you go through, He's there with you. You know that. And you know there is a plan and a purpose behind that. So talking about that job that I took that I thought was so bad that I really didn't, I wanted to resign within the first two months. 
But then I look back now, I see what God was doing. It was for my next step in growth, in my spiritual life, and in my in a career. When you go through difficult situations and you need wisdom, I would recommend fasting. When you're really broken, you don't know, you want to cry out. Just put everything away. Just go into the presence of God and say, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You know, <laughs> there are instances in my life that I had financial struggles. And I went into fasting. And one of the main thing is, God, what's next? Like, what do I do? Like, where do I, how do I pay my bills, right? In that moment, I did not get my money. I did not get, you know, whatever I wanted. But I was able to see God in a whole new way. I look back and say, he never failed to provide. Why would he fail to provide now? I was able to look at the faithfulness of God. You see how great God is. You see, as a father, I want my son to see what I am doing for them. I want my son to see my love towards him. In the same way, the heavenly father is waiting for you to set aside that you're distracted with everything. Just come to him, to talk to him, to see what he is doing in your life. And fasting is a great way to do that. You're leaving everything aside and sitting in the presence to receive from God, to acknowledge how great he is, to acknowledge his faithfulness, to acknowledge his providence. And even when you're very comfortable in life and when you have absolutely no problems, I would recommend fasting. You know why? You know, the lukewarm Christians are the most comfortable people. I've never seen a lukewarm Christian ever having any sort of problems. And those are the people who gets up first thing in the morning on the Sunday, goes to church, after that goes to a brunch, enjoy their weekend, uh, jobs are fine, family is good, kids are fine, everything is perfect in their life. There's no ups, no downs. My question is, are you doing what God has called you to do? Because the day you start doing what God wants you to do, you will see enemies attacking from every angle. You'll see everything going wrong. So if you are in that stage where nothing is going wrong, I would say fast and see, God, where do you want me to grow? What do you want me to do? Where do I invest my talent? Where do I serve? Where do I get to experience your hand working in my life? When I fast, you know, the way you express yourself to God, it can be in any ways. Again, it's not said in Bible. It's totally personal how you do it. I mean, if you have health issues, you don't have to give up food. Or be maybe, you know, whatever is in your heart. It's more of a heart issue. It's a coming with an attitude. I give up food when I fast because I'm trying to represent that, you know, I'm hungry for God more than the food that is basic necessity. It is a representation of that. I try to give up, you know, some people give up social media. They're doing mindless scrolling hours after hours. So stay am like, you know what? I want it's time to put that all away. Sometimes you're so busy raising your kids, going to their sports, going to their school, going to do this, going to do that. 24-7, you're with them. You might want to take a break. And go to God and say, God, I need some refocus. Whatever is that in your life that you need to give up, I give up. I put aside everything. I'm not watching kids that day. 
I am not on my computer, not working, just in the presence of God. I sing songs. I read the scripture. I acknowledge the greatness of God. Just worshiping him, going into the scripture, prayer, worship. There's no format. There's no, sometimes a complaint. I complain to God, God, why am I going through this? Why are you putting me through this? And I'm complaining after seeing God's faithfulness in life repeatedly after and after, but it's okay. We are humans. We fail. My kids can sometimes come and complain about the, they don't have the best food or whatever. But we know this is all after they had their best things in life. In the same way, we also tend to complain. But it's okay, but just go into the presence of God and complain if you have to. Just go into the presence of, if you have no words, just cry out. Just use the time to dedicatedly focus and say, God, I want to hear from you. This is my life. I think I'm prideful. I don't know. Is there any areas in my life that you want me to fix? Is there any areas in my life that you want me to change? It's just a moment with you and God. We just finished our ladies' conference this weekend, and the theme was transformed. Refined by fire. That was the theme. And we heard beautiful messages. Yes, uh, don't be confused. I, my wife volunteered me for everything, so I was here. Um, and that's every year. So, uh, <laughs> But I was blessed by some of the testimonies these ladies shared. Uh, some of the things, the things they went through. It's, you look back, so this word's in Zechariah 39. Um, refine them as silver is refined and test them as the gold. The, 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 the theme was around the purification process. Uh, I mean, there was a lot more content to it, but I would like to piggyback on this. I mean, ladies, those were here. The, I think Heather did talk about the, the, the purification process of precious metal. When you find the silver or the gold ores, it's not in its purest form. It has all kinds of gunk, dirt, everything in it. But when the silversmith or the goldsmith takes this metal and it puts it through the fire and it melts the whole thing down and the whole entire process, the, 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 the smith is right next to it watching it melt. And then all the impurities that get burned up will get burned up and rest of the things that comes up, it removes it. And then you get the purest form of silver and gold. When you have the, in the original form, it's not shiny. It's not very appealing. But once it's purified, its value goes up. It's pure, it's shiny. Once you polish it, if you look yourself in it, you'll be able to see your reflection in it. And fasting is some of those moments when you let God transform you. Let you refine by fire. Because you're taking that intentional moment to sit in the presence of God to say, God, I just went through this. I don't understand. Everybody else around me is blessed. Everybody else around me has better circumstances than I do. Why did this happen to me? And God will start revealing himself to you and you will be able to see what God is doing in your life. When the pure metal, the pure gold, just like how you can see the reflection, when God is done with you and he lifts you up, he can see his reflection in you. He's able to see his image in you. 
And that is what the transformation, the purification process looks like. And fasting really helps with that. It helps you gain that wisdom. It helps you, it helps you able to see yourself through scripture. So I will highly encourage you, church, that in the coming days, take some time out. If you have an RV and you want to go away, I don't know, you want to go hiking somewhere and like just in a secluded place, leave everything behind and just with your Bible and just sit down in the presence of God. Try that. And you will be able to see what is God really doing in your life. If you think you're a failure, you haven't done great things for God, go sit in the presence of God. He's going to reveal you where you need to go next or what he, you have already done for him that you haven't seen. It's a purification process. 